Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar. My name is Chris Marquardt and with me as usual is Henry. Hello. Hi Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing splendid. <laughs> I'm getting things done here. It's amazing. I'm, I'm productive. That's I have a productive great. boost here right now. Um, which wasn't always the case over the summer. So, yeah. But I think it's the only way to, to answer that situation, isn't it? Ah, that that and 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 uh, a ma major source of your income just breaking away that is a motivator too <laughs> yeah um, i certainly know what you're talking about <laughs> uh, so let, let's get a couple of things out of the way just before we uh dive into today's topic loki's castle i can't wait um to find out what that is because i don't really know so you are the one who's prepared i'm not <laughs> Because uh, I was busy with things. You were also busy with things. Um, um, you are. You are. Let me let me bring up your website just um, before we get started. You are selling calendars. How come? You've been I doing do this in the past, right? Yeah, the calendars are like a thing I, I do for quite some years now. I think like six or seven years or so. And um, it has been an annual uh, kind of a tradition to uh, just stay in touch with the people who uh, usually are on my tours. And um, the calendars are very nice to for for them to just um, yeah stay in touch with the with the areas they travelled into. And um, for me, it's quite some fun. And it started with uh, with the Iceland calendar, and. Um, Last year, Greenland um, was the second one to, to pop up, and I'm super curious about ice. So the ice structures uh, just were the next one to head up. And this year, um, the, the very first time, uh, the polar worlds, like um, pictures of, of both um, polar regions, um, together with um, Ice Expeditione, which is like a German travel agency, um, which I collaborate with. and. All of those calendars, they are just um, printed on um, recycled paper and um, are carbon neutrally produced and shipped. So um, that's like the, the thing that's really important to me. And of um, all the revenues I um, achieve, 5% are going automatically to the WWF um, Arctic program, which is like um, a very important to me uh, as well to support um someone who's who's working in the field there this is straight in my wheelhouse because you know how much i love ice and how much i love ice photography so um yeah um so 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 you you start if i understand correctly you you started this whole calendar thing to give the people who traveled with you something to remember the, the trip by um, exactly. But this is, yeah, this is open for everyone. So uh, anyone who's yeah. in, interested in that photography in, um, so what would you, oh, by the way, the text here on the website is German. You're, I think you're working on the English one, but of course, um, the pictures are pictures. So um, the, the thing is that, that the calendars are in German because they have a German calendarium as well. So uh, the month are uh, German, the national holidays are German. Oh, that's, uh, that's how you learned some German, right? It, it is indeed. Um, the, the Polar Worlds calendar will be adapted in an English version as well. Um, so feel free. If you want to have an English version of uh, any of the other calendars, that's just an easy fix. Um, that shouldn't be any trouble at all. Um, all calendars have like 14 uh, pictures in there. That's um, quite something. And you got a code for next year to get like the 2022 calendar uh, discounted. So you, <laughs> so <laughs> so so. Uh, if anyone orders any of these calendars, that's a direct support for uh, Curiously Polar and for Henry. So um, that's pretty awesome. So um, and 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 it's a it's a it's a really good way to learn the uh, the German names of the months. So <laughs> there we it go. Is indeed. Um, and while but we're you prepared something as well. Yes, while we're at it, um, another thing that has come out of COVID for me is, um, well, those of you who watch this, those of you who see our video um, will certainly notice that there's quite some effort that goes into this, quite some technology to make it work. This is not Zoom, this is not Skype, because everyone is bored by the bad sound and the bad video. So we're using a completely different system here, um, which is an open source system and it's free, but um, it's called OBS Ninja. And uh, it is it's pretty much cutting edge. It's really state of the art. It, there's the, the latency. We can have a fluid conversation with high quality video and audio, which is 
if you're somewhat in that business, you will know that this is very, very difficult to do. And uh, but it's possible these days. But the system, again, OBS Ninja. Uh, let me bring up a website here. Is it's not super simple to learn. There's a bit of a learning curve there. So um, I've been working with this system for half a year now, intensively working. This is not the only production that we're doing here in video. Um, I have like five other, other things that are uh, now video productions using that system. And I decided to offer some consulting on that side. So anyone out there, if you, if you want to spice up your production if you want to get better video quality at low latency at good audio quality and we're talking studio quality audio here uh remotely um you can hire me <laughs> my services <laughs> this thing is no no plugin no installation no login this is really a very um smart system um takes takes a bit to learn it but it has amazing features i mean you the, you know these situations where you talk over each other because one is delayed and the the other can't really hear that kind of stuff that's a thing of the past um you can share screens with it it's sharp it's good sounding it's yeah very very advanced and um that thing we'll put a link in the show notes it's, it's the it's obs ninja academy uh what i call it and uh yeah that's i think that's everyone the business who enjoys <laughs> Our, our podcast, no matter if it's audio or the video version of it, um, can uh, be testimony for the quality of it because we're recording it through uh, OBS Ninja. And yes. the people who are watching it on, on YouTube, that's the, the quality you can expect there. And that's just, it's really amazing uh, what you've set up there um, in just in, in half a year. It's pretty, pretty awesome. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, and, and I'm really enjoying this because I, I come from photography, so and I do c also come partially from videography. I, d I come from audio. I used to be a music producer in one of my past lives. So th the whole thing comes together and culminates in this video. Um, we, we could even just click a button and go live here and have a live stream like a live television show. So it, it is really coming together and uh, putting uh, effort in this. I am now at a point where... I'm very happy to teach others. And teaching is another thing I do. I mean, I do photo workshops, uh, photo tours and, and local workshops here, which I can't do right now. So this is another way of um, teaching others too. And and my goal with this is to really teach people and then have them walk themselves. So it's not like a, I, I want to be your service provider for the next 10 years. Um, no, I, I want to get you off the ground and be able to do this yourself. That's kind of my goal with this. So... That out of the way, let us talk Arctic. Loki's Probably Castle. One of the what is Loki's very Castle? Very last Arctic episodes this year. Because is it? Yeah, I think it's beginning of November. I mean, when this episode is aired, it's election day. So, at least in the US. So, if you are in the US and uh, tune in here, just pause it and go and vote. Please yes. do that. It doesn't matter who you. It doesn't matter who you vote for. But it's most important that you actually go vote because democracy only lives from participation. It, it does matter so, who you vote for, but we won't tell you who you vote for. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's beginning of November, and yes. that means it's the beginning of the Antarctic season. With the one tiny flaw this year, it's not starting. So all operators have cancelled the Antarctic season. So we just oh, when you say season, it is you mean you mean the Antarctic uh, expedition season? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, forgot mm -hmm. about uh, saying that. Because <laughs> the Antarctic is there, and there is a season <laughs> there right now. It's it's just not there uh, is, yeah. being the um, summer starts, and we are not there and enjoying that and bringing it to life for for visitors for guests. Yeah. So this will be like the one of the very last um, Arctic episodes for this year, and then we're swapping to Antarctic topics. Mm -hmm. And then when the Antarctic uh, summer ends, then we're coming back to Arctic topics again, I think. That was at least a pattern we had in last year, and I really enjoyed that, and uh, I hope you did as well. Um, so let's talk about Loki's Castle. What do you have in mind, Chris, when you read the name or when you hear it? Well, Lo Loki is one of those Greek uh, gods, um, isn't he? I think he is. <laughs> Norse. A Norse. Sorry, not Greek. Norse. Of no, it's, it's all right. 
it's up there. it's close by it's all what's, europe what's his what's his greek equivalent which one would that uh, be no idea loki loki Someone, is loki the god of the sea no loki is um not really a god he's more he's part of the of the uh, god family uh-huh. but he is more a trickster so ah, as we have okay. learned from the Thor movies properly or all the other Marvel movies, I'm not really up to date there. But the display of Loki is always he has some some different agenda and trick and treat. And that comes into play here as well later on. But yeah, it's a it's a North God. And Loki's castle means or could mean what? Someone's Where he castle? lives somewhere. Yeah. Possibly, <laughs> that, that would be that would be the simplest interpretation. Just, it's not. It's something completely <laughs> of different. And when, of course, it is. <laughs> when I heard it for the first time, I was so amazed by it. So, uh, roughly eleven years, twelve years ago, uh, a Norwegian lat expedition just uh, went out to the uh, North Atlantic Ocean, north of the um, polar circle, and they actually did some research in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which is like the border between the tectonic plates of uh, Eurasia and Northern America. So it's basically a limitation that goes straight through the Atlantic Ocean from the North Pole down to Antarctica. And there's something on um, on barometric map, uh, maps or on uh, topographic maps, you can see that. It's pretty amazing to see that line on uh, the Should we bring floor. up a map here? Uh, yes, please. Let's and do that. Um, on that Mid Atlantic Ridge, they found something extraordinary, and that's the northernmost deep sea hydrothermal vents in the Arctic Circle. It's roughly 200 kilometers further north than uh, the previous northernmost, and it's called okay, but, Loki's uh, Castle. It's a bit of a mouthful. What are deep sea hydrothermal vents? What are deep sea hydrothermal vents? It's basically an underwater volcano. It works pretty similar. It's releasing uh, super hot water. And when I say super hot, I mean water as hot as 300 degrees Celsius. That's double the three times uh, the the uh, boiling temperature of water. It's 570 degrees Fahrenheit for those who are still in medieval times. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> that means that the super hot water which got released there has a reaction with those ice cold frigid waters of the North Atlantic Ocean there. And the most phenomenal reaction there is that this, um, the, the hydrosulfites, the, uh, the, the, the sulfites in there they react with cold water and they deposit and when they deposit they build something up and that's something we want to look into in this episode what they created there and we probably show you a video later on which gives you a better visual so if you're just listening to that as a podcast i highly recommend swap over to youtube have a look at that video because today it really adds onto it if you've got a visual of what we're talking about it's really difficult to understand um what a hydrothermal vent actually looks like or what it sounds uh yeah what, what it is um this one you have to imagine it's at a depth of two and a half thousand meters that's almost eight thousand feet that's a that's a quite a, that's pressure. a lot of pressure down there it's a lot of pressure and the whole deposit is about 250 meters in diameter so it's another 800 and feet uh, 800 feet at its base and it's about 90 meters in diameter on the top so it has a certain height and it actually works up it, it looks or you can imagine it like a cone it's not formed like a cone it actually has a number of chimneys and it has five major chimneys and those vents are actually the largest one and because the the assembly of that appears like a fantasy castle the guy who ah. discovered that just gave it the name loki's castle isn't it amazing 
It's great. Well, sh- should, should we bring up the video that you gave us? Just just to give everyone a visual, because everyone's dying sure, to see yes. this now. Yes, Let's bring please. this up. So so this is from some underwater, I, I would guess a vehicle, a remote control or something, right? Exactly. Because it's, it's probably a, it's not a, very nice to be there in person. <laughs> It, it certainly is not there. Um, yeah, this is a, a remote um, operated submarine um, yeah, look from that. that expedition. And you can see uh, it's called a black smoker. And you get an idea why it's called black smoker. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, it is crazy. It is. So the um, yeah, the solution that gets to solve there um, releases sulfite. This sulfite reacts with the cold water and it's deposited. And you can see how the chimney is just built up. Um, around that, that vent so the center of the vent is actually uh, constantly in action that's why it's open like like the chimney of a volcano and around that the um, uh, sulfur deposits are just creating this huge tower like chimney and then there's this vehicle and it's 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 probing whatever's coming out there so um, this Thing, this instrument going in there doing some research and stuff that is mind-boggling how big are those structures um as i said like 250 meters in diameter the largest one gets up to uh, 50 meters high so it's, high it's but, quite but the, how, what's, what's the diameter of one of these chimneys are we talking like uh five meters are we talking like no less um less so they, they are that. not so they're a bit smaller yeah. than that they're a bit smaller, yeah, um, but they're rising high, and that's uh, pretty amazing because down there, um, if you consider the pressure, it needs quite some some um, solidity in the structure to withstand that, uh, that pressure. Mm-hmm. So the pressure that comes out of the vent is so much higher than the, the uh, than the pressure of the water down there. Mm-hmm. This is pretty amazing. So on the map here in the picture, you can see the Mid Atlantic Ridge coming down from the uh, North Pole. It's the line on the ocean. The ocean, the blue. Then you have Greenland on the left, Norway on the right, Svalbard on the top, and Iceland at the bottom. So it is kind of in that um, square between Greenland, Svalbard, Norway, and Jan Mayen, actually, which is closer than Iceland to Lokis Castle. It is actually at the edge of the two ridges, forming, um, yeah, forming a kind of a yeah, a 90 degrees angle, the Knipovich Ridge and the uh, uh, Mons Ridge. And the northeastern Mons Ridge is where Loki's Castle is uh, situated. Why is Loki's Castle so phenomenal? It's not only the depth and that it's um, the northernmost one, it is so spectacular for two more reasons. One is it's happening, usually those hypothermal vents are happening in areas where you have a much higher level of um, uh, seismic activity, of uh, tectonic activity. So up there, the, seis- uh, the tectonic activity is so small that you have just six tenths of an inch per year that's moving there. So it's literally not measurable. It's really tiny. So you have an, a very stable, almost inactive um, seismic area and then you still have this very active um, vent. And the second uh, thing that makes it really extraordinary is you've seen the probing vehicle in the video. Mm-hmm. They are searching for life forms. They are analyzing the water and they found uh, single celled life forms, which for them, they fill a gap in science which never could really. Um, be filled and explained the the step from single formed or single celled organisms to complex organisms like plants, fungi, animals, and humans. So down there in two and a half thousand meters depth, at the edge of three hundred degrees hot water and frigid cold ocean water, with the pressure down there, a life form lives that gives us an idea how life might have formed in the beginning of Earth and how life could survive in other extreme environments like super salty lakes in Africa or Antarctica or life on other planets. And this is a pretty amazing finding down there. It's a one of the most hostile environments you can imagine. For certain reasons, this hostile environment is exactly the right thing for those 
single-celled organisms. Yeah, life really finds a way. I mean, it's, it's it's interesting where you find life. We are talking about, well, a very hostile environment that just creates this island of uh, of life with its, uh, well, with the temperatures plus the, I guess, nutrition and nutritious things that come out of the vents. Um, they find bacteria like miles under the soil <laughs> somewhere underground. There's like life is everywhere where it can be, I guess. It does. And you have to understand for, for, for um, to, to analyze how spectacular that finding is to when we talk about complex life forms, we talk about everything that has um, a nucleus which contains uh, certain energy pr processing um, processes there and those single celled organisms they don't have that nucleus so they have to convert or create energy in a different way and when you analyze that and you can find that there might be just for for the future some possibilities there we haven't understood yet and so far those life forms are also the major producer of of, of methane in uh, in the ocean which is kind of an amazing finding out of that expedition so this whole finding of loki's castle is not only spectacular from a visual perspective and from a geo uh, from a geographic perspective it is um just from the meaning of life itself from where has complex life evolved from it creates a huge link which is still not complete so it still is a huge mystery but it gets there much much closer and now we understand how that um, process might have been uh, happening or might have happened i'm i'm very impressed i mean um, how did they find that did they just do they have expeditions that scan the ocean floor or how do you come across something like that Kind of. So, um, uh, Mr. Peterson, who was the um, lead on that expedition, already discovered a number of other hydro, uh, yeah, hydrothermal vents. Um, he was also the one who discovered the previously northernmost hydrothermal vent. And when you study that, you you find a pattern that they always um, or that they yeah that they exist on. Uh, on the edges of tectonic plates where you have certain activity and he just wanted to check if uh, if that's also possible further north and since we have um, which we already talked about in an earlier episode uh, volcanic activity on the ground in that area anyhow that was a kind of a of a good guess and then yeah you could just take an expedition to uh, find out if your theory is right or not simple as that and they were luckily successful and came up with this very amazing um yeah new discovery uh, and and i think just from a technology point of view over the last i don't know 30 40 years the uh, the whole under remote controlled undersea vehicle uh, technology has been advanced quite a lot so it's easier to get down there now and get good video from there get um uh, probes um, samples from down there so I guess that has also changed I I have this okay so when we look at the pressure that's down there I've, uh, I've a while ago heard a discussion between one of these undersea researchers or deep sea researchers with an astronaut and the the the, the, the deep sea researcher said well we are looking at I don't know, a thousand atmospheres or more of pressure down there. All you guys have to take care of up there is minus one atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> so the guys doing, which is true. So the guys doing the deep sea exploration um, have quite a challenge on their hand to keep the equipment going and everything. And that, that we can find these kind probably, of things is amazing. It's probably one of the reasons why we have discovered space much more in depth than we know about our ocean floors. It's difficult. Because it's yeah. it's it's very difficult to go down there. It's very a, a very hostile environment for us, um, and that also gives us an idea how fortunate we are as as human beings that everything, all the uh, temperatures, um, 
all the different variables were just right in place for us to develop to evolve yeah so that's a, a, a very interesting um, aspect on that as well yeah for sure all right loki's castle um there's some really interesting uh, further links in the show notes so make sure to um have a look at the material there there was also the secret of why it's called loki's castle um and uh of course, the link to the video, if you're just listening to this, um, is also right at the top of the show notes. So tap that if you want to see the vents and if you want to see some of the materials we have here. And again, don't forget our um, our little, um, yeah, of the calendars and the OPS Ninja consulting. And with that, I say goodbye. And until next time, take care, everyone.